Hi everyone! In the previous video, we implemented a few methods in the order class, and we realized that our data model lets us represent states that should be impossible to reach. For example, we know that the status can only be draft, checkout, submitted, or delivered. However, nothing prevents us from creating an order with an expired or empty status, since the status field is just a string. Another example regards a basket. It can only be empty if the order is in draft, yet we could create a delivered order with no item inside it, which doesn't make any sense. So the goal for today's exercise is to redesign the entire order class in order to minimize these impossible scenarios. In functional programming, we say that we try to make illegal states unrepresentable. Now, this is a very open exercise with many solutions. So I'll let you experiment on your own and then I will present my approach. Just be aware that there is no perfect solution. It's always a trade-off between different concerns, such as the complexity, ease of use, and precision of the implementation. Great, so I'll let you pause the video and try to refactor the order class. You can change anything you like, the class definition, the method signature, or the error enumeration. OK, so the first thing I would like to change in this order class is the status field. At the moment, it's encoded with a string, while we know that there are only four possibilities. So I think it will make much more sense to have an enumeration instead. So what we could do is to change to rename order statuses to order status, like singular, and create a seal trait uh, for that. Then we'll say, OK, uh, drafts, checkout, and submitted, instead of being just string, they're going to be case objects. So they're going to be singleton objects. And then at the end, uh, what we'll do is that we extend uh, order status. So we just need to remove this uh, string here. So okay, so what I've done here is mainly changing uh, draft checkout and submitted delivered from string to a custom enumeration. Now we can uh, refactor order to say that the status is of type order status, which means that we can remove this command because it, you know, now the code itself tells us that an order status can have these four possibilities. We don't need to have a comment anymore to, to say the same thing. Uh, we have a few things we need to change. So the invalid status error, at the moment it used to store a string. Now it's going to store an order status. What else? Uh, there is also here in the uh, constructor of an order. Now when we create a new order, it's in draft. Okay. We'll also need to, ch to update all the tests. I will let you do that as a bonus exercise. Uh, for the moment, I will only focus into the main code. OK, so what can we change next? Let's have a look at the next field, basket. Basket is problematic because we know that it, it can only be empty if the order is in draft. Then once we move from draft to checkout, we do check that the uh, basket is non-empty. Uh, if it is empty, we do, uh, send, we do uh, produce an empty basket error. And in fact, this was uh, a problem we noticed when we implemented submit. We had to check again that the basket wasn't empty, even though supposedly this check was already performed in checkout. So ideally, it would be nice if we could encode in the type system the fact that the basket can only be empty if it is in draft. So one way to encode this fact is to update the uh, enumeration, the status enumeration, from being a singleton object to uh, being a class. So we can very well uh, define it as a class and put data inside of the status. So for example, we could say that the basket is a, is a list of items while it is in draft, but once you move to checkout, it must be a non-empty list. So if you want, here what we're saying is that once we encode inside the type system that the basket can only be empty in draft, but in all the other statuses, it must be a non-empty list. So we have the guarantee that it cannot be empty there. So once we have done this change, we need to update the status. So now we don't need a, a basket field at the status level. It's at the order level. It's stored at the status level. 
and we need to update our, our code. So for add items, what, what is it going to do? So uh, let's deduplicate it. So it's OK. We are either in draft or in checkout. So here what we could do is to uh, pattern match like this to you know so that either the status is in draft and we have access to the basket. Now, I do prefer to give uh, a name to this variable instead of pattern matching on all the field, because we discussed it before, the problem of pattern matching on all the field is that if you add more fields to the status, then it will stop compiling. So this way, it will, it's a bit more refactoring proof. OK? So now what do we need to do? We need to produce uh, a draft that contains the uh, current basket plus the items we want to add. And it's basically the same um, in checkout. So this creates a bit of duplication, but you know, it's not the end of the world. We can uh, do it here. Shoot, we need another one. OK, so here there is a problem because basket, when it is an empty list, uh, so we need also to convert this into a list. We need to call two lists twice. Yep. OK, so what do we do next? Once we are in, uh, so when we call the method checkout, we're going to say x.basket is empty. We produce a non -empty, uh, a bas an empty basket error. But then when we move to checkout, we need to produce a basket that is non-empty. Uh, but we do know that it is non-empty. But what might be good, actually, in this case, is to pattern match on the basket instead of uh, checking if it's empty like this. So we could say match and have an exhaustive pattern match like this, when we say, OK, it's either nil or it is uh, a head and a tail. And then we build a non-empty list. But I believe that in the non-empty list class, there must be a function yeah, from list. So you see non-empty list from list. So we could say x.basket. And this is going to produce an option of non-empty list. So if you want, in, in this case, it is uh, an empty basket. So the, the, we know that the basket is empty. While in the second case, we do have the proof that the basket is non-empty. We do have a non-empty list of items. So uh, this way, it's a bit better. It's a bit better than if than else because here we we pass the proof to the type system that the we we have made the check that the basket is non-empty and we can prove it. We 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 store a non-empty list instead of a list. Uh, what about this? Uh, so we'll do x dot checkout. And um, yeah, in fact, this is the same. The status doesn't really change here. So we can put an underscore. What do we do here? Uh, so we are in checkout. So now that, that's really the benefit of this. We don't need to check anymore that the basket is non-empty. Because if you want, uh, here we do know we have the fact that x the, dot basket is a non-empty list of items. So we don't need to verify anymore if it is empty or not. In this case, this doesn't make sense anymore. It's impossible. Uh, but the rest is still possible. So we can we still verify that the uh, address is non-empty. And uh, here we need to say x.basket. So we just need to pass over the basket from the checkout status to the submitted status. Uh, and same here. We'll say x.basket. Cool. OK, so that's, uh, that's done. And now here we also need to change the empty method so that the uh, basket is stored inside the draft. Nice. Let's go to the next field. So delivery address. It is an option of address. Well, we know that this address you know, cannot, must be empty in draft. And when you are in checkout, you can set it. But once you're in submitted or delivered, it must be defined. I mean, it's impossible to submit or deliver uh, an, an, an order if we don't know the delivery address. So we can do the same. We can move this delivery address from the order class to the status. So we'll say that if you're in draft, there is no delivery address. It's impossible to set, because in draft, this is a status where you add items to your basket, but you can't set any delivery address, at least not in this current workflow. If you're in checkout, yes, you may have a delivery address. Like Initially, when you move to checkout, it's not defined. You define it uh, a bit after. And while you're in submitted, 
are delivered, it's not optional anymore. We do know that the delivery address it must be defined once you move to uh, submit it. So let's encode this information inside the type system. So let's have a look. Uh, now we can remove this field from the order class and let's repeat the same process. Now there is a bit less things that are broken. Uh, okay, so when we update the delivery address, we'll say, okay, this is a checkout. And what we do is that we change the status and the status will go from, uh, so in fact, we do a nested copy. So maybe it makes sense to do it uh, in, in two steps. So let's say new status is going to be x.copy where delivery address is equal to sum of address. And then uh, within this, we update the status. So we could do it in one step, but I find it a bit more readable this way. And now within submit, we'll say x.deliveryaddress is empty. Ah, but similarly, so now instead of doing an if then else, here it may make sense to do also a, a pattern match. So we'll say delivery address and we pattern match on this. Now we have two branches of the enumeration. The first branch is when the uh, delivery address is not there. The second one here is that when we do have an address and when we do have an address, we can uh, store it in the uh, submitted field. So this is a way to show, to tell the type system that we have made the check, the delivery address is non empty and we can prove it. We know that in this branch, the address is defined. And now when we store it, we store it not as an option, but we store it as a normal address. Cool and deliver, uh, does it need to be changed? Uh, let me check. So yes, here we do need to mention it that this is the current delivery address. It's a bit annoying that it, it will be nice if we could uh, copy automatically all the field from submitted to delivered. There are some libraries that allow this sort of things, but you know, it doesn't, it's relatively easy to do it manually as well. Okay, so next, what can we do? Let's go to the, the other field. So now we have the created at. So created at, we can let it there. It is, it is not optional. We know that when we create an order, it's always there, so that's fine. Well, submitted at, we know that this field uh, is set during the uh, submitted, uh, in submitted status. So we know that when we call the method submit, this is a moment where we store this data. And it is important because if you, if you remember, when we implemented the method delivered, we had a case where we are checking if submitted at is defined or not. But we know that if you are in submitted status, it must be defined. So here we might, it might make sense to actually define it like this. So it says submitted at is uh, an instant. So let me uh, import it. So submitted at doesn't make sense in draft and checkout because we haven't reached that state. But once we are in submitted status and delivered status, then the submitted at field must be defined. And this is the one way to encode it. Now, once we do this, it means that we can change our logic. So first, let's remove it from the order. And uh, now what we'll say is that once you move to, uh, we basically can copy this line. Once you move to, when you call the method submit, we'll store the submitted at here. And now the, the, the real benefit of this technique is that now once we are in submitted, we don't need to check anymore if submitted at is defined or not. We know that it is defined. There is, it, it is not optional anymore in this state. So now we can say the duration is x.submitted at. We can remove one of these uh, you know, impossible error scenarios that we had to encode before, which means that we can go to the order error and remove this uh, meaningless uh, error. Cool. Uh, we still need to uh, change a few things here. So here we'll say submitted at is equal to x dot submitted at. Yep. Um, another thing we can do is that we can repeat the same process for delivered at. It's, it's the same principle. Uh, it doesn't, delivered at is only set in delivered status. So let's encode this fact at the type system. Uh, so the order status, then we'll say delivered at is defined only here. 
Now, uh, when we uh, define it here, now instead of defining it outside, we'll define it inside, and it's not going to be optional uh, anymore. Nice? So now, we, uh, I forgot to update these things for a while now. Uh, so now delivery address is removed. The submitted at and delivery at are removed. Uh, another thing we could do is, you know, like here at the moment, we are calculating the duration. But what we could do is that instead of, of making it like as a return type of deliver, what we could do is make it as a field of the status. Because if you want the status delivered, has all the necessary detail. So we could say something like, um, they make it a dev delivery uh, duration. And this will be in charge of calculating, uh, oh, sorry, it's the Java time. There, there is two duration in Scala. There is the Java time duration and Scala concurrent duration. So here at the moment, I'm using the Java time. And we could say duration between submitted at and delivered at. So now if you're interested to know about the duration, you know that if you're in delivered status, you always have access to this uh, information. Which means that we can simplify our code here. We don't need to calculate the duration anymore. We don't need to return it. So it means that we can make our, our code a bit simpler. And here, uh, basically, we just want to return the new order. Yeah. OK, so we saw that by encoding more information uh, in each status, we are able to remove impossible error scenarios that we, were, we, we, we had to capture before. Like, for example, the fact that once you're in submitted status, you may not have a submitted at timestamp. Now, let's see if we can do uh, more things like this. So let's have a look at the order errors and see if we can get rid of some of these error scenarios. So let's have a look at the missing uh, delivery address. It's only produced in one function in submit. So submit, what it does is that it verifies if we are in checkout status and uh, it check if, the if it is the case, it checks the delivery address. And if we don't have a delivery address, we return an error. Now, there is not much we can do about this. Uh, you know, this, you know in, in, this is the moment uh, when, we when we move between checkout to submitted, we must have a delivery address. So we do, we do have to make this check. But potentially, if we were, what we could do is that instead of doing it two steps, so instead of doing a method call that sets the delivery address and another one that do the submit, we could very well do it in one step. So for example, if we say, okay, when you submit uh, an order, you must supply as well the address. So if you do so, if we were allowed to make this change, then potentially these error scenarios will completely disappear because now we, we don't need to check if the address uh, is defined or not because it will be supplied, uh, is supplied in, in the method. So we could do something like this. Now you might argue that, uh, am I, I mean, this change is actually changing the workflow. Like, you know, you can imagine that the user will have to supply everything at once. Now we could imagine that the front end could very well allow it to do it in two steps, but only supply the address uh, once the user press submit. Now, this is a business decision because, you know, basically the difference between these two approaches is that with the first one, when the, the user press, uh, you know, change the, set the delivery address and maybe like kill the page and come back to it, we probably still have access to the delivery address. Well, if we do it this way by supplying the address at the same time of submit, we may lose these data. The front end may not be able to, to keep it. So again, this is a business, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a business decision. It's a bit of, we need to decide how we want to do this. But this is one way to make some uh, error scenario impossible by uh, supplying all the data we need uh, for each transition. That, that's one technique. I'm not saying that it's necessarily we should do it, but that's one way we could do it. So if we wanted to go that way, we could apply the same strategy uh, to checkout because at the moment in checkout, we verify the basket is non-empty. But for example, if we were going to change the method so that it gets the non-empty list of bask of item at the moment when we move from draft to checkout, then that would be fine. Actually, even checkout could be the moment when we do create the order if we, for example, we, we don't want to save anything in our database before that. Again, this is a business decision. There is no right and wrong. Uh, it's just different approaches. So I'll just refact, uh, roll, roll it back for now. So what else could we do? Uh, something maybe uh, far less controversial is uh, that we could change the ID from being a string 
to, uh, to being a, a special case class. So this is called a, a new type or a wrapper type. So basically the idea is to create a case class that wraps a string, so let's call it a, an order ID, and then within this we'll just change that the order being of type order ID. So we don't really specify more, we, we don't really provide more safety because in, in a sense an order ID and a string is the same thing. But for example, uh, an, an, uh, a basket has item inside it, an item has also an ID. Now before it could have been easy to use the wrong uh, ID type in the wrong field. So we could have you know, used an order ID inside of an item ID and the other way around. But if we create order ID and item ID like this, it's far less likely that we do such a mistake. So this is a very simple technique and it, you know, it avoids lots of, of uh, very simple errors. Since we are in the item class, let's talk about it. So for example, the quantity and unit price, we could change a few things here. Uh, for example, the fact that the unit price uses double, we could use big decimal instead because uh, double is subject to loss of precision. You know, we may not always get the same result when we multiply doubles together. Um, the quantity also, the quantity and unit price, in fact, the, both data, we know that they cannot be uh, negative. It doesn't make sense to have an item with uh, minus three uh, quantity. So it will be nice if we could have like a, a positive in, something that cannot be negative. In Scala, it doesn't exist uh, out of the box. It doesn't exist in a standard library. But there is a library called Refine. Uh, so I will, I will put all the link below the video that allows you to use, to add predicates to a type. So for example, you can say int refine positive, or in fact, I think they have even a, a shortcut for it like called pose int. And, and you can, uh, th this way you can verify at compile time that five is a positive int. And if it's some data that you fetch from the database, you, you have also some validation logic to out of the box that, that verifies this for you. Now, personally, I, I don't use refine very often, but uh, it might be a, a good option if you really want to guarantee at compile time that you want to guarantee that this data cannot be empty or, or, or some numbers cannot be negative or something like that. I think the bottom line here is that we need to use tool that is suitable for the programming language we use and, and also with our colleagues, you know, something that they are familiar with or at least comfortable using. For example, one thing that we haven't really discussed it yet, but is you know when you call delivered, and, and when we calculate the uh, the difference between submitted at and delivered at, at the moment there is nothing that you know verifies that delivered at happens after submitted at. Uh, you know it must be the case. You know it's impossible in the real world when delivered at happens before submitted at. Now this knowledge is only in our head, uh, it's not encoded in the type system. There might be ways to do this, but I believe that in Scala is probably not the language where we can encode very easily this sort of information, and it will be very awkward to, to work with. So that's fine, you know, I think we need to use the tools that we have at, at our disposal. So if something, for example, non-empty list is very easy to do, I recommend using it, but something like, for example, refinement type with complex logic between types, maybe a bit too complex. So it's really up to you to decide, but just something to keep in mind. In summary, today we saw that we can reduce the number of possible errors we get at runtime by constraining our data model. I recommend three simple techniques to do this. One, we can use wrapper types, also called new types. For example, instead of using string to encode an order ID and an email address, we can create an order ID and email class that wraps a string. This way, it's less likely that we assign the wrong data to a field. Two, using non-empty list or non-empty vector whenever we have a sequence of item that cannot be empty. It's quite unfortunate that these classes are not part of the standard library. I hope it will change in the future. Three, and this is the most important one, using enumeration to encode something that can only exist in a few different states. For example, in the exercises, an order had only four possible statuses, draft, checkout, submitted, and delivered. So with an enumeration, it perfectly describes the stages an order goes through, which means that when we onboard a new developer, 
they will be able to acquire this business knowledge on their own just by reading the code. I know that I've already stressed this point before, but enumerations are not used enough in programming. It's probably because there are not many languages that offer this construct, and in Sky 2 the syntax is a bit verbose. That's why I'm really excited about the new Enum syntax in Sky 3. I really believe that it, it's going to boost the usage of enumerations in the same way as case classes simplify the creation of immutable records. Great, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't hesitate to share your solutions below the video or in Slack. Have a great day, everyone.